Hi everyone, welcome to PhysChem with Liz. Today we're going to look at how to construct a full Born Harbour cycle for a simple 1 plus 1 minus ionic compound, sodium chloride. So what I mean by that is, this is the simplest form of cycle because sodium forms a 1 plus ion and the chlorine forms a 1 minus ion. So it's got less amount of steps compared to other compounds like magnesium chloride where you've got a 2 plus metal ion for example or calcium oxide where you've got a 2 plus and a 2 minus. Okay anyway so in this cycle I've drawn out the full thing we want to write the formula of our ionic compound at the bottom and in brackets we need to include state symbols so little s in brackets just means solid and then in the step above we've got the formulae of the elements in their standard states so sodium solid plus chlorine gas which is forming the ionic compound so this is the energy change of formation we're making the ionic lattice solid from the elements in their normal states. And I've put a half in front of the Cl2 just to balance it. So we've got one Cl all together there and one Cl there. So we're just looking at the balanced equations and the processes first before we work anything out. So we're forming the lattice here. Then the next step, we're atomizing the sodium. So we can see that the sodium's gone from sodium solid to sodium gas and then the next step we're atomizing the chlorine it's already a gas but we're forming one mole of atoms so here we've got a diatomic molecule we've just got the half in front of it to balance so now we get rid of that and we're just forming one mole of atoms Cl gas so we've got formation of the ionic solid, atomization of the sodium and the chlorine. And next we've got first, that's the number one, ionization energy. So these are just the abbreviations. Triangle means change in. Capital H means enthalpy, which is a posh word for energy. So energy change to lose one mole of electrons. So it's only the metal that's going to have a first ionization energy because metals form positive ions, whereas non-metals do not. So sodium gas goes to sodium 1 plus gas. After the first ionization energy of the metal, we have the first electron affinity of the non-metal. So chlorine gas becomes chloride, Cl minus gas. And then the last step going down is lattice enthalpy, which we're going to work out. Now these numbers, I didn't do anything fancy to get them. I just got them from a textbook. If you've got a data book and you're happy to use it, you can find all these values in there. Or you can just look them up on the internet. If you're sitting exams or doing assignments, these numbers will be given to you, so you don't have to worry about that. And then another thing I'd like to mention, the directions of the arrows. So just notice the sign. If it's a positive, then the arrows are going up. If it's a negative, the arrows are going down. So it's just like energy profile diagrams endothermic changes arrows go up exothermic changes arrows go down so if you're not sure about that just go and recap that bit first before you move on okay so the next thing we need to do is to apply Hess's law now I've split this cycle up into two routes so in other words there's two ways of getting from here the elements in their standard states to here, the ionic solid. We can go all the way around here or we can just go directly from here to here. 
So two roots, I've done it in colours so you can see. Root one, I've done in pink. All the arrows are going clockwise. And root two, I've done in blue. One arrow going anti-clockwise. Now if you remember, if you think back to Hess's law, a simple definition of Hess's law is that root one, to get to a certain point, is equal to root two. Now what that's talking about is the energy required. To go through root 1 is equal to the energy needed to go through root 2 to get to the same point. So what we're going to do is write this out as an equation and collect all the terms involved in root 1. So we do plus 108, we're going round with the pink numbers, plus 121, plus 496, so we're adding them because we're collecting them, plus minus, that will give us a minus overall minus 3, 4, 6, plus the thing we're trying to work out, equal to the terms in root 2, there's just one of them, minus 4, 1, 1. So this is the lattice enthalpy that we need to work out for sodium chloride. And then what we do next is write out this equation, but rearrange it in terms of what we need to find out. Okay, so rearranging this, this question mark, lattice enthalpy, so that is equal to minus 411, so I've kept these on the sides they were previously, and I've moved this big long term over here. So I've moved that over there. When we change sides, we change sign. So now all this big term becomes negative, change sides, change signs, and then I've collected it all up like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put it in the calculator, in case you're unsure. Um, I shall put that here. So, this minus, minus 411, minus brackets. Very important to use brackets, so don't try and do this on a mobile phone, you'll get a funny answer. 108 plus 121 plus 496 plus brackets minus three four six close brackets equals minus seven hundred and ninety and the units of an enthalpy change are kilojoules so an amount of energy per minus means per mole so an amount of energy per amount of a chemical compound so I'll pop that answer in there now what does this answer tell us it's negative, so that means that it's an exothermic change, it releases heat, it's energetically favourable to do. Now the answer when you're calculating lattice enthalpies should always be negative because we're making a compound. And when we make a compound, that change is always exothermic, releases heat. And the bigger the negative number, the stronger the bonds are in the lattice.